they should just like put the series on hold for a few days just to try to get some guys back Pritchard's grabbing people's legs like he's a van gundy you know yeah what's like what was that all about i i don't know (laughs) playoff p man that's the real playoff p Pritchard. but like all of it is just so weird and then like you know and some of it is impactful marcus obviously misses the game rob plays and leaves and you never know what's going to happen there that's not yeah uh, that's not great but like you know uh, so i don't know if it's injuries or my aunt, like for all the crap we gave Jason Tatum about scoring 10, the whole Heat starting lineup scored 18 points tonight, Jimmy. Jimmy Butler had six. So, like, I we have these narratives like you can't be a superstar and a team's best player and only score 10 points in a playoff game. Right. And then Butler's like, hold my hold my beer, six points. Like I, I Miami looked like they were like on to game five, like five they, minutes into game in, they, in, in they the seemed game defeated like before it even tipped off i don't know it's like they it was so weird like they, knew, they just knew that they weren't going to be able to hit a shot in the first quarter i was honestly wondering if they were going to hit a shot in this game i yeah. mean they were missing and you got to give the celtics defense credit and rob williams played the, the rob williams the difference was, yes was was very apparent early on there it is yeah good timing on that sebastian um all that being said i thought the heat missed so many like little bunnies sure. and just easy shots. So it was a combination of both. Um, but man, you could really see how Rob just again, it's just affecting shots. Even if he's not getting a hand on it, it's just his presence down there. Oh, yeah. What he forces I- the heat to do to just to get shots up, you know, and and that that was obviously a, a huge reason for the start. And the starts are everything. I mean, you saw how the Celtics, the difference in this game compared to game three. Yep. When they just no showed. I mean, they pretty much took on the, yep. these two teams are trading, yeah. you know, personalities or, or something. But um, the difference tonight was the first quarter, and the game was essentially over at, in the first quarter. You know, yeah. it's same story, same story in Game Three. The game was essentially over in the first quarter. I know the Celtics came back. The Heat, especially right now, they don't have they don't have the roster to make big comebacks. They just don't. Especially if Hero's out, you don't have that offense. I mean, Duncan Robinson's going to come in and try to shoot them back in. I don't know if it's going to happen. Oladipo, oh. give, give him credit. He's he's doing everything he can. But like you said, with Lowry being, you know, hampered, Butler, who knows what's going on with him. And Bam kind of went back into a pumpkin tonight a little bit. He, he's, he wasn't the game three Bam. Rob, Rob effect. Yeah, of, of, right, Rob effect. And, and you know what? We, we should talk about how, and we are, because we're, we're literally talking about it right now, but the difference between Rob versus Bam from two seasons ago in the bubble to now it's it's flipped a bit yeah i mean rob wasn't even playable in the bubble so you really had right. tight you you know you really had Think how far he's come you know yeah uh you know and you know we were talking about like that was the that was the back and forth with each series was this is a rob series this is a canter mm-hmm. series not as a starter as a backup to tice who was at that point the unquestioned starter and somebody bobby manning thought was going to get 16 to 20 million dollars a year in free agency but i i digress um, but Rob was not ready for <laughs> Rob was not ready for prime time. Rob was frigging jumping at every fake. No, he wasn't. you know, he, wasn't. he was late on closeouts, wasn't switching, just leaving guys all the time or switching at the wrong time. Like everything Rob was doing just, you know, instinctively just seemed wrong. He was just kind of like a big puppy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of running around and it just wasn't right. So, yes, the, the factor I went back, I went back and watched the, the first like five, six minutes um of the first quarter during halftime just to kind of take in you know and pay just just to watch rob you didn't miss anything in the second half that was no no no. but like and then i no no no, i jumped right in but i just went during halftime i watched the first five six minutes seven minutes of the first quarter just to see again and you you could literally see you just watch the heat's wheels kind of spinning when they were getting into the lane the the, the hesitation uh you know a couple times where they would have just continued on they stopped they ended up and they settled for floaters in the lane instead of taking it all the way to the basket yeah jimmy butler went to drive rob was there he kicks out rob defends the perimeter butler shoots an off balance turnaround jumper with rob contesting everything was different there was no easy buckets to be had there and you could kind of feel the rob effect in addition he's grabbing multiple offensive rebounds the catches on the lobs the the Celtics Mm -hmm. threw one good lob to him the other two were behind and he's just one-handed almost everything that he kind of does he did and so it was evident but the early impact when I think the Celtics really played good ball minus Jalen that a lot of that had to do with Rob because the the defense was there um you know they ran out to that early lead that's it that's it ball game that I mean but 
On wow. top of that, I want to see a Miami Heat post game show right now. They must be losing their friggin' minds. We scored one point in eight <laughs> minutes. That's like, insane, for any, think of the worst we've ever bashed the Celtics for anything. And imagine being a Miami Heat fan watching this, watching your team score one freaking point through eight minutes and be like, what the one, f- are these guys two. doing? You yeah. have to. You- you don't. You don't want to be. And and there might be. There's. There's usually I want to some be there. heat trolls you, in here. Are you guys here? I don't think they control tonight. Y'all had one point in the first like 15 minutes. Like I honestly thought that they might go a whole quarter without scoring a point, without hitting a basket. Um, that was just preposterous basketball. It's hard to do. And again, they missed a lot of bunnies. And I know that they're banged up, but man, you're in the Eastern Conference Finals, and you and you show up with one point in the first like eight basketball minutes of the game like what the hell is going on or longer longer than that didn't it get to like the four minute mark before they hit a field goal it, it was something was like that eight it was plus just, minutes in before they hit a field yeah, goal it was, it, it was it was unbelievable it had to be close to a record in like amount of time this is an interesting comment. I was on Discord earlier, and for those of you who haven't, please go check out our Discord server. We're up over a thousand now. Active chat all day long. I jumped in early um, and uh, chatted with some people, and the topic of like most important Celtics came up because, uh, you know, before the game, you didn't know if Marcus or um, or um, or or Rob was going to play, and then it turned out Rob did, Marcus didn't, and I swear, and I know like. Everyone will debate this one, so there's no right answer. But, like, in that chat alone, there wasn't a single person that didn't list of the top three. Tatum, obviously, is number one, no question about it. And mm-hmm. then it was Rob or Smart or Smart or Rob. Um, just in terms of their impact, there's no nobody. And then maybe Al. Jalen's the only one that's not getting mentioned. This isn't meant to be Jalen slander. It's just the yeah, difference. Yeah, it is. Come on. It, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. It's just simply like the effect that those guys have for what the team needs. Right. They just don't have. They don't have sure. things that can do the, what those guys do. That's kind of why. Uh, though Derek White acquitted himself well in the first quarter, he was all over the place. I thought he played a pretty solid first half. Um, but the Rob effect was so immediate. Uh, and impactful it's it's you just go back and forth on it and you're like i don't know man he might be that important to this team he i mean the on off the on off splits with him during the regular season are insane they, so they i are, mean yeah. there there there's numbers there i mean the, the the net rating with rob williams on the court is is friggin bonkers well that's the thing that like the basic stat box isn't going to really be like oh rob this guy rob you know he, he had eight points tonight and you know but but it's what he does it's his presence it's the shot effects it's his just ability to just go up, um, all those things. And that isn't a shot at – it's not a shot at Jalen Brown. I mean, Jalen Brown went out and gave, and gave you 40 points uh, in game three, but you lost the game. So, again, like wh- it's that effect that you're talking about where you need a guy that can come in that can really actually affect winning. And, and they, they obviously need Jalen Brown. They need points where they can, where they can get it. Um, but, it, it you know, sometimes it comes at a price. So, um, I, I would – you know, I don't know what my ranking is. Obviously, I have Tatum one. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty invested. I'm I've I've really come around on Smart on Smart's importance to this team um, over the last few months here. Yeah, it's, it's, since it's, he, since he came back from injury and went on his please don't trade me like turnaround yeah, run. I've really come around. I mean, he's I, been so freaking important. Yeah, and I, I you know, and I, I I always knew why he was important. I'm not stupid. I I get why people loved Marcus Smart, but I still couldn't fully come around on it because I thought that he was still hurting you kind of like on the offensive end, and you know his 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 defense was always you know elite to an extent, but he never really seemed to be like the shutdown one on one defender. And this is, and it's, that's kind of changed recently. He takes the assignments. He can guard everybody. Um, so like my, my value of Marcus Smart is, is exponentially risen. So he's probably number two for me. And then I think it's matchup based, whether you want to go Jalen or, or Rob, um, they're both obviously important. And then you've got Al. So, I mean, this, 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 these five players, I mean, it's no, it's no secret why you're in the position that you're in right now. These guys have really found their stride this season. They've grown up. In most cases, there are still the the moments where you want to pull your hair out because they they don't act uh, the mature way that you want to see them out there. But generally speaking, the way this team's played together, I think it was I think it was Van Gundy who said it tonight. He thinks the Celtics are the favorites to win the whole thing, and he said that when they were down two to one in the series. So there's a lot of people, not just you know Celtics fans or 
Celtics post game show that are starting to believe and do believe in the Celtics team as as the best team in the league. Yeah. 